Ryan Ahari, Sherman Oaks Field Deputy for Councilmember Nithya Rahman. Um, I don't have much of an intro. I've been working with this community for over two years. My one year mark with the council member, I guess not tech, well, no, it's been over two years now. My first year with the council member will be in six days. Um, so very exciting um, to still be here with you all. Uh, I did wanna let you all know on a couple of things that we've been working on. Um, there's been a lot of fading red curb throughout Sherman Oaks, and um, I'm working with DOT to start with all of Ventura, which is kind of going to be a huge lift, but I sent in a request for um, Ventura from, cold, uh, from not cold water, from the 405 to cold water. We'll see how long that takes, but there's a lot of fading curb, there's a lot of curb that um, also just has chunks that are missing that are also an issue because some, some of our curb is so bad that um, it's causing damage to vehicles or pyre, uh, tires are popping and um, some an update on that, which I will share photos of hopefully soon. It's extremely, it's nearly impossible, unfortunately, to fix a sidewalk. Um, and that's a huge public safety issue that we have because we have people who are in wheelchairs, we have those who are elderly, we have those who are differently abled, and it's not easy navigating through our sidewalks. We, the city has been sued for its sidewalks. Um, there's a, a, a massive rebate program we have right now where the city incentivizes residents to take sidewalks into their own hands. Um, it used to be up to $2,500, now it's up to 10,000. But that's not a, yeah, it's not a joke. Um, there are different programs for sidewalk repair, especially for those who are in a wheelchair or are disabled or whatever it may be. Um, and even then the turnaround is not great. Um, it's all on a, on a sliding scale, depending on if you live near a bus stop, um, if you are disabled, if your request has been in the queue for over 120 days, you're still looking at 10 years. Um, it's really, really inaccessible and it's a huge problem. But to fix every single sidewalk, the last we heard, 500, it's 500 years. And for just a, just a normal sidewalk, just for someone like myself, I'm looking at 20 or 30 years. So it's, again, it's not a, it's not a great system um, and we need significant funding from the federal government to help us with that. But yes, that's that, unfortunately that's not a joke. By taking advantage of the rebate program, if there's particular sidewalk, and people always are referring to sidewalk in front of their home. Um, if it's, for example, sidewalk in front of your home, that's kind of the turn, that's kind of the, the, the way to get around it is the rebate program so that you, you wouldn't have to wait for those 10 years, but you are, you know, you are putting up front the capital, you are putting, you know, you're getting the, um, the certified contractors, you are getting city approval, you are getting permits, like you're doing all of that heavy lifting, and then you have to submit everything later. So hopefully the rebate program will kind of act as a bypass for the 10 years. Um, but definitely if you don't use that, you're, we're, you're looking at, and again, I'm using 10 years on the lower end. The longer end is 30 years. So it, it, it's unfortunate, but it's definitely part of our public safety. People trip, people get hurt. Um, on 311, if you do see a particularly bad sidewalk, there is an asphalt. Um, it's not the best, but there is an asphalt request you can go ahead and submit. And then street services will come out and, and at least patch it up to make it a little bit smoother. But, um, and so it's a big achievement when we can improve our infrastructure. And I will say it's just, it's a small thing, but um, there is a curb in front of Lazar's luggage on Ventura that is missing a huge chunk and street services today said they're fixing it. Um, so that's really exciting. Um, and it's definitely part of making sure that, you know, our most trafficked areas are not causing damage to our residents and their vehicles and making sure it's also well lit. So continuing to identify additional lighting opportunities in our district is really important. Um, so that's kind of what I've really been working on recently. If you've seen fewer news racks on Ventura, on Oxnard, Sepulveda, uh, Van Nuys, it's because our office worked with um, really Soha, really Jules Fear. Um, we got 30 to 35 news racks flagged for removal and street services is, has slowly been removing them. So that's exciting because they've been abandoned, they've been damaged, they just bring kind of um, a bad image to our community in, in, in a lot of residents' opinions. So hopefully that's gonna make a difference. Um, and then the final thing I wanted to mention is that 
um, well, not final, final, but uh, our parking meters on Ventura, they seem like they're all kind of coming to the end of their lives. The display is foggy and you can't see how many quarters you've put in or how much time is remaining. When do you get back? Am I gonna get a parking ticket or not? So the other thing that we're working on is we're working with Department of Transportation to take a look at all of those meters, again, starting with Ventura, but to see if we can get them replaced um, because we don't want folks to have to report each meter individually one by one. That whole area on um, Moore Park mm -hmm. and Selmar behind Gelson's, I know we've spoken about it several times and whenever I talk to you, you know, there's been X number of people housed, um, but I drive by there all the time and it's just gotten bigger and bigger and bigger. And I'm sure, you know, we've made, you know, national news now for the amount of um, deceased uh, people that are training up on our streets and it's, it's a problem. And, you know, several of them were right around that area. Mm -hmm. um, so it's it's not it's not safe. It's not sustainable for anyone, and it is getting bigger. It's getting um, more and more problematic. And literally, I mean, it's not even being dramatic anymore. It's literally people are dying. So what are we doing to protect the you know the the residents that need to walk by there that want to go to the grocery store, mm -hmm. the people that are on the streets, and the people that are trying to run their businesses? I mean, this is a it's. A, a catastrophe for everybody. So what can we do to, to, to help the situation as expeditiously as possible? So we have at least four different homelessness service providers who go out there on a weekly basis, uh, NOHO Home Alliance, LA Family Housing, St. Joseph Center, which focuses on RV outreach. And then of course our office and our homelessness deputies actually go out there to touch base with our regulars. I will say we have, there, there used to be tents on the west side of Silmar. There no longer are. Um, we, we did get those foes, those folks housed. I know there's one tent on the east side, um, and basically we're trying to find additional housing because we are filling up very quickly at Highland Gardens, which has a capacity of 140, which is the project room key site that's been extended for the next three years. Um, so we're continuing to work on that. I will also say um, the our, our St. Joseph Center, we have been focusing on different sites throughout Sherman Oaks. Library Square is one of them. But very recently at a different intersection, we used our St. Joseph Center program to get folks housed and um, two RVs have been removed off of the street. So it's it's gradual. It definitely not everyone is going to see us doing the outreach. Not everyone is going to see us going door to door and all of that, but the work definitely is being done. Again, it does take time. Um, and then also our office has been in touch with at least 15 or 20 different uh, uh, neighbors on Lenox and throughout Library Square. You know, we've been in touch with them to let them know what we're doing and, and updating them on getting folks housed, getting them indoors, you know, relating criminal uh, uh, concerns to LAPD and all of that. Um, but like I said, I mean, I drive by there all the time. And so I know that I don't know if they were replaced or I mean, because to me, they look like the same ones. And now there are two new ones on Moore Park. And the tent that was on the west side of mm. Solar is just one block over. And the tent that is on the um, east side of the street has gotten significantly longer, larger, mm. and now there's a truck that is pulled up next to it, and it's sort of a continuation. Sorry, I should have been I should have been clear. A, a, a nearby intersection, a nearby intersection had two RVs that were that were removed because those folks got housed. They relinquished, you know, ownership of the RV. Um, and the reason why I brought that up is to show that that is part of that is part of our office's program of the St. Joseph Center, which is RV engagement getting folks housed and then getting RVs off of the streets. Um, and then I will say we do have LA sanitation scheduled for a, very, very soon. Um, and so our team is always out there working to make sure that we, you know, we work with, with these individuals to get uh, anything unneeded off of our streets. But um, I can share a lot more. Uh, I can go on and on, but it's definitely continuing to be on our radar, and we're definitely trying as much as we possibly can to to reduce homelessness. And we definitely have a sense of urgency because 
there is uh there was a, a, a what is it a, a blizzard warning last night for our county so we know how serious this is and we don't believe that unhoused folks should be left on the streets we we do want to bring them indoors to give them shelter to give them the help that they need so we're definitely in agreement on that and um further deaths is not something this office wants at all um so anyway that's just some of the work that we're continuing to do again it's gradual but it's definitely happening so so with regards to the St. Joseph's program, so once some uh, a person in a vehicle indicates that they would like assistance and then you connect them with the St. Joseph's program, what happens, you know, what's, how long do they wait? What determines, um, you know, how they are served? Um, I mean, what happens to their RV? What, and do they, do this, does this individual actually get, housing somewhere placed in housing somewhere is there a shortage so we definitely rely on uh, a lot of different partners you know if, if there's if we're in a situation where we really need to get someone housed which to be frank we always are we will reach out to nearby council districts um you know council districts to uh council president Krikorian has been kind enough to lend us some tiny homes for some of our unhoused folks um and unfortunately you know that 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 is that is the name of the game um but i will say our homelessness team would have more information on specific guidelines i know that they head out there as quickly as they possibly can um i don't know the exact turnaround but the the whole uh uh i guess i should say the the, the whole point of the program is specifically to do that engagement when that person gets housed there is a process for the RV removal. The RV only gets removed and the, the 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 if it's a trailer or whatever it may be, that only gets removed when that person gets housed. Because first and foremost, we have to get them that housing and then we work on really everything else. So um, I hope that answers your question. I can get more specific details in terms of, you know, outreach workers and the turn turnaround and all of that. And I can I can share that with you. Thank you. Yeah. I just have one more quick question. So, um, am I correct in um, in uh, I've heard that the the people in RVs are not um, processed in the same way under Karen Bass's um, Inside Safe program. Is that correct, or am, am I mistaken? I heard that oh. RVs were were mm -hmm. not considered sort of candidates or, or or brought in at the same rate as people in tents. Um, to be frank, I wouldn't know. I'm not entirely sure of their scope since it is the mayor's program. Um, I can try to get more information and then I can I can let you know what the mayor's office shares. Yeah. Okay, great. Thank you. I don't think you touched on this, but I was uh, I had a question on some of the streets, some some of the neighbors, uh, street lights, crosswalks that need that some of the neighbors in different parts of the neighborhood in Sherman Oaks have requested. I mean, is there a plan to somehow um, uh, install new crosswalks or, you know, there were some that were approved in the past and mm -hmm. like the one from on Kester going from one side of Ernie's walk to the, the across the wash. Mm -hmm. I mean, and then there's there are several, and then there is there a plan for street crosswalks? So we, we have an, a lot of approved uh, signals, um, and the problem is that each signal is, I think the last number I had was like a million and a half dollars. So these signals are quite costly. And again, the problem is we as a city don't always have the funds to cover them. So unfortunately, we have we have a handful of signals that have been approved. And if we have the money, we could we could get them, you know, we'd be able to start construction. Um, I will say that DOT does have a they 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 prefer crosswalks that have a signal because the issue is on a street like, for example, Magnolia, if someone's driving 40 miles per hour and you're crossing in the middle of a crosswalk and it doesn't have a signal or anything indicating you are using the, the crosswalk, a vehicle driving 40 miles per hour will kill you. And so that's kind of the issue we have is that DOT actually um, has been starting removing certain naked, so to speak, crosswalks because they've been deemed unsafe. And so the other issue is that throughout COVID, DOT stopped processing crosswalk requests. They had, in the Valley, they had a backlog of 6,000. So 6,000 individual requests. I'm talking about stoplights. I'm talking about stop signs. I'm talking about curbs. Uh, you name it, everything DOT related. 
And so because of that, they put everything on hold and everything, unfortunately, is still on hold. So even if I want to crosswalk right now, it's been DOT approved, et cetera. Um, last I heard, it's, it's still on hold because of COVID, because of the backlog, the lack of staff, the, the, all of the you know, compounding issues that kind of have just piled on together. So we, we do rely on folks to, to point out problem areas because residents know better. Uh, residents are the best sources to tell us where there's a problem. So a lot of times folks will tell us. And we also do on our, on our website, just so everyone knows, we do have a traffic, and I'll link it in the chat. We have a traffic and transportation Google form that we used to kind of supplement the traditional LA DOT 311 system because DOT took off its 311 system throughout COVID. Like you, you, can't, you can't use it right now. It doesn't exist, which is really frustrating. So we as an office supplemented that by having a Google form and that's where folks have submitted we, you know, requests like stop signs, stop lights, speed bumps. Um, so we need to continue working on it and we need to work with DOT to find uh, ways to bring these quicker online because it's, it's definitely a concern and we want people to be able to cross to cross safely and not have to be afraid, afraid when they're using our streets and all that. Okay, Ryan, I appreciate you. You know, I um, enjoy working with you and I enjoy, um, I really do. I, I know we, we, we kind of jump on you for questions and answers, um, but I do appreciate all your hard work. I really do. Uh, you're a great um, asset to Sherman Oaks and uh, I, I know we all appreciate you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Susan. That's very nice. And I always love working with you and everybody on this committee. So I wouldn't be here at 745 in our, in our <laughs> office right now if I didn't want to. So. Well, thank you. We appreciate you.